Love doesn't exist. There is no such thing as love. Therefore, there is no sorrow. That's what I thought. What is meaning? Not the religious or the self-imposed belief, but what is it really? If you had asked Socrates, it would be to live not only just, but also a good, meaningful, and virtuous life. How could the common person feel before their last day? Would it be on social media? Would you cling to those you love? Or would it be out trying to become some kind of legend? In today's video, we'll talk about Devil Man. Not the classic just yet, but the Netflix original, Devil Man Cry Baby. This is a series that has been memed and shorted to death. Clips taken out of context of overtly lustful imagery, clips handling depression, and other things like this. But why in today's modern world does this show relate to us so much? And before we get into it, spoiler alert ahead. Devil Man is an old series, a really old series. It started in the 70s with the manga, uh, show and even ran until the 2000s and in that journey we met devil lady and we would meet a more gruesome and powerful version of akira known as violence jack violence jack being one of my favorite iterations of akira and i think that if it was seriously serialized that they could definitely take it into a berserk or a vampire hunter d like space now this series would go quiet for a while and many of us wouldn't be introduced to it until Devil Man Crybaby, myself included. This was what got me into Devil Man. We follow Akira, a young, quiet, and shy boy who no doubt is your typical normal kid. We're told all we need to know from the start. He's adopted, his best friend's Ryo. He's not a very brave person. However, he finds meaning in knowing that others need him around, and it provides them with joy to have them around. It isn't until that fateful night where he would go with his best friend Rio in a forbidden party where his soul and his life would be changed forever. This is where the story changes and Akira truly becomes a new character by merging with Amon. He would become a devil man and I say a devil man because there are multiple devil men, some good, others bad, but I won't be going into them in this video. After becoming a devil man, Akira's life would change. He would catch Amon, the demon inside, and his thoughts and feelings and memories, as well as becoming brave, to adopt the characteristics of becoming a rebel figure, and he'd become more popular with the ladies. Something in line with the young guts or vampire Hunter D would be. After merging with Amon, even though his personality would arguably get better, his life would get worse. His girlfriend would be murdered, his adopted family would be murdered or turned into devils, and his parents' life would be cut short. And the world would end, of course. I'm not kidding, the entire world would end. Throughout it all, Akira and Amon are left alone, with the thoughts in their head, thinking from the events, the news, the social media, and the inner conflict between the two of them, bit by bit, what's the meaning of all of this? As devils become revealed and hunted down, the world quickly descends into madness. To look further into the thoughts of Akira and Ryo, we'll have to look at someone I often disagree with, Nishe, and his book, Beyond Good and Evil. There are many concepts in the book, and the main ones being the critique of traditional morality, the will to power, perspectivism, eternal recurrence, genealogy of morals, the ubermensch, and art and aesthetics. For this video, we'll be focusing on the first three. The Critique of Traditional Morality. Devil Man is an anime which has a lot of Christianity and a lot of allegories to Christianity in it. And this is a philosophy of which Nietzsche commonly disagreed with. He believed these promote a slave morality and advocates instead for one to be the master of morality, which he characterized by strength, power, and the pursuit of one's own desires. We see this most commonly in Rio. Ryo goes around Japan and South America, torturing, plundering, and causing all-out chaos and havoc for no reason. Even in earlier scenes in the club with Akira, he's shown to open fire on an entire crowd. He does evil deeds as if he were almost somebody like Dio, and it's later revealed he's literally the devil. We see in his deeds and actions, he doesn't want to just be judged by someone like God or the rules of heaven and earth 
but primarily wants whatever it is he wants in the world. His character is often seen dis disregarding the safety of others and is shown with a general lack of care for life. It's heavily emphasized that he doesn't really care for life with the exception of Akira. This is in direct contrast to Akira, who I believe can be seen applying concepts of perspectivism. Perspectivism is Nietzsche challenging that there is an absolute truth and that the truth is instead shaped by personal experience. This is very true for Akira, who sees his whole world crumble in front of him, literally. His girlfriend, his parents, his adopted parents, and everyone else he knows and loves dies. He has to witness his fellow devil men die brutal deaths, and all of this leads to his ultimate battle against Lucifer. In contrast to when he began, he was living through the lens of other people, and he was happy to just be around and provide value and fill that role. Later on, when he's fighting Lucifer, it's seen that now he's thinking about everyone else and he's battling the literal devil in order to avenge everybody else. When we see Akira cry, he's crying for everyone. In direct contrast to Ryo, he has a strong love for life and even the smallest of lives because it's seen that he'll cry for insects it's seen that he'll cry for some life that others may find easily insignificant. And of course, the two of them have an opposing dichotomy and an opposing battle, which ultimately brings about not only the end of the world, but also brings about the end of Akira. And now that brings us to the world. The will to power is what Nietzsche thought was a fundamental driving force behind human behavior. He believed it signified the desire for self-assertion, dominance, and realization of one's own potential. We see this quite literally in the devil men, who have dominated the demons within, and that's why they're devil men and not just devils. We see this in the greater society which isolates and kills anybody who they suspect of being a devil man, regardless of if they are or are not. We even see this on social media as Akira is trying to stop innocent people from dying and a fictional Twitter is slandering him, but eventually the tide turns and they start to support Akira and they start to see out his side. But ultimately this leads to total chaos and paranoia. In conclusion, Devil Man is a lot deeper than it seems on the surface, but for the sake of time, I try my best to compress it. I hope you learned something both about Devil Man and Nietzsche, and I think what Nietzsche wrote can really apply to a few characters in this show, mainly some more of the Devil Men who struggle with their identity and being teenagers in this world, and I just didn't have the time to go over them. But if you want to, leave a comment, and maybe I'll probably go over those guys too. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, peace.